Hey, this is Catherine Knacki. I work at the American Negotiation Institute, and you are listening to Chasing Dreams with Amy J. Love it. Love it. All right. Hey, Dream Chasers, this is Amy J, and thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 207 of Chasing Dreams. I can't believe we're already here in October. It is birthday month, which means, guys, we are raising money for Mental Health America. If you can and you are able, would love it if you could donate to the cause. Just go to amyj21.com slash birthday. Link will be in the show notes. We're raising money for Mental Health America. Goal is 2100. Can we get there? Not without your help. So please do check that out. It would mean the world to me. Think of it as a birthday gift. You don't have to get me a birthday gift. But if you wanted to, that's how you would do it. All right? So today I have a wonderful guest, a recommended guest, actually, from another recommended guest, which is really funny because really the recommendations just keep going. It's like a circle. <laughs> and it's just family, and it's awesome. And I have Catherine Kanapke. RN, BSN, Communications and Operations Manager at the American Negotiation Institute, where she uses her experience as a psychiatric nurse trained in therapeutic crisis intervention and a mediator to address the psychological, emotional, and social, societal concerns? I was going to say social concern, but societal concerns that impact women in the workplace, which is such an important thing. In October this month, she's launching the American Negotiation Institute's newest podcast, ask with confidence so that will be in the show notes you guys should check it out for sure it's designed to empower women and to help them gain the confidence they need in, when engaging in difficult conversations which is definitely not an easy thing to do and one that's a bit of a challenge for people but Catherine you are here because of your story so I don't want it to be confused you're not here because of someone else you were brought to my attention by someone else a mutual friend of ours Kwame Christian right and mm -hmm. such an awesome guy he was like you know you would love to have her he told me your story I was like this is gonna be fun this is gonna be fun so thank you for joining us here today I'm totally excited to have a conversation with you well Amy I am so excited to be here and I am equally excited even more excited that you support mental health and that it is mental health month I couldn't think of a better month to be on the show because it's something you know my background is as a psych nurse it's like I think and about these things. <laughs> <laughs> Was this on purpose? Uh, you know, the timing of your episode might be on purpose, but having you on the show <laughs> was going to happen regardless. Well, you know, a psych nurse and then also, you know, my own mental health uh, mm -hmm. struggles. Um, and it's, so it's something that's very near and dear to my heart, um, and I love talking about it. So I'm really excited. Thank you. And, and you know, this might be a rare place that um, people encourage conversations about mental health. So if you don't mind me asking, and please do tell me if I'm like getting a little too close or too far, um, was mental health something that you and your family talked about freely? Um, well, there's no, there's no question that we'll get too close. I'm an open book and, and think that mental illness should be openly talked about. Um, but for me, I was lucky in the fact that well, I guess I want to say lucky, um, but mental health was something that was always talked about and mm -hmm. always very open and, you know, getting support for it was something that was always very important um, because, you know, it's a genetic thing. Um, so my mom also struggles with mental illness and so does my sister. Um, so we've all kind of gone through it. My mom went through it first. Uh, so she kind of uh, blazed the trail for my sister and I to uh, really be proactive in taking care of our mental health and, and our, our mental illnesses. You know, that is awesome because I've heard of people getting help, but no one's really talked about it in the fact of blazing a trail for the generations that follow, right? I, I've never really heard it that way, but that's pretty much what your mom did. I mean, mm -hmm. her getting help, maybe, I don't know if you know or not, was it, do you think it was challenging? Oh, um, I, I do know because it's something that's been talked a lot about mm -hmm. in my family. My grandparents weren't very open about it and kind of ignored it. Just the generation that my mom grew up in, yeah. it wasn't really something common. And, you know, even as when I was younger, it was less common than it is now. Um, so my mom really, really struggled um, growing up. And it wasn't until years later that she kind of started figuring out but it was pretty much all on her own without much support from her family so I am very lucky um, that I do have the support um, I mean it's unfortunate that 
anybody would have a diagnosis of a mental illness because it's really hard to deal with. But I, I am very lucky uh, that I do have the support because I have seen, uh, you know, in um, working with adolescents on a, a psychiatric unit, a lot of yeah. the families um, just wouldn't kind of do that follow up care. Uh, and, you know, they were less off because of it. So we'd see a lot of them come back because they weren't getting the help that they needed. Yeah, it's a shame, right? I mean, I, I think it is a generational thing, but I think unfortunately that it carries over to the next generation because it's not being talked about, right? And that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do to stop it is have these conversations, be open about it, and just kind of normalize it of sorts. And that's, it's a long way to go, but conversations like this, I think help. So let me ask you though, Catherine, when you were younger, and this is a common question, you may have heard it in previous episodes, what is it you wanted to do? Um, well, it started out wanting to be a teacher. I okay. went to a French elementary school, and my sister and I used to play uh, school, but we would teach in French. So I thought I was going to be a teacher uh, when I was really young, and then kind of growing up, um, my perfectionistic tendencies kind of took over, and um, my, what I call my need to be at the top um, and, and show everybody that I was, quote unquote, the best, kind of took over and it changed into um, thinking that I was going to become a doctor. Um, mm -hmm. But I was really sick at the time of looking for colleges um, and wasn't sure that I was going to really make it through. Um, and so I decided, well, I'll become a nurse um, because I don't want to go through college for four years, get a with pre-med and then you come out with something like biology and that wasn't really something that interested me so I decided you know what I'll become a nurse and if I still really love it I'll push forward um, and into that field but um, that being said obviously I'm, I'm not really practicing as a nurse anymore because that really wasn't fulfilling um, but a lot of that is because I made those decisions when I was really sick and really focused inward and on my own health um, so, and really obsessed with health. I mean yes that was going to be a question you know how do you go from nursing to here but while you were doing the nurse thing, while you were doing psychiatric nurse uh, nursing, right, you said you didn't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. But do you think you would have stopped it, you could have and should have stopped it sooner? Um, I think if I had thought about it earlier, um, maybe. I, I think a lot of the, so my background, I had anorexia going, really severe anorexia mm -hmm. within and out of treatment. Um, when um, at the age of graduating from college or from high school and into college. Um, and, and so the focus for me was really, I'm, I was obsessed with my health. I was obsessed with what I was putting into my body. Um, and, and so that was all part of the journey. And I'm very thankful that I do have that knowledge. It's very practical um, and, and really helps with um, how do I deal with people and how do I communicate with people and how do I listen with empathy and really get on their level. So there were a lot of things that I really did learn and then also getting to work with a really difficult population. So psychiatric illnesses when they're in crisis, you know, there's all that emotion there and how do you get them to move past that and, and kind of break that hamster wheel yeah. um, was is a very valuable skill to have and something that I am very appreciative of. And I mean, I, I love all the mental health patients that I've worked with and, and all the kids that I've worked with. Um, but it, it's just, it's not fulfilling for me and something that I, I'm wanting to move beyond. So now that you're doing this, you're working at the Negotiation Institute, what is that like? You can tell us dirt. It's okay. We're friends. <laughs> Um, Kwame's listening. It's okay. <laughs> uh, well, Kwame's a slave driver. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, it's great. You know, I get to wake up, do my own schedule, and um, reach a lot of people and talk about things that not only do I, that I have experienced myself in trying to overcome, um, but I mean, I, I also get to do a lot of things that scare me um, and a lot of new things. And so oh, I do, kind of, yeah, do tell. <laughs> I kind of fell into this. Um, it started as, you know, nursing wasn't cutting it for me anymore, and I wanted to find a way to really find fulfillment, really find happiness, um, but I didn't want to go through college and pay all of those college tuition fees when I wasn't they really sure what I wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, I'm still paying off my debt from nursing school, um, but 
so Kwame graciously let me use him as my guinea pig to, it started out just administrative assistant and going through there and really use learning the applicable skills of things that I was lacking and just seeing how much it worked and how much it was helpful and really how much, you know, communication skills in any sense, whether it's a difficult conversation or just mm -hmm. a conversation in general is just really important in helping you establish relationships um, and really grow connections. So I got to say, kudos to you, because <laughs> a lot of people will hear an offer for an admin assistant position and think that it is beneath them, right? Someone with a degree, someone who has been a nurse. Admin? I'm beyond that, right? And so, and, and so what you had and what you did is actually awesome because look where you are now, right? You didn't know that you would move beyond that position, but because you were, you humbled yourself to do this, to try something different, right? Because I think a lot of people, as they chase their dreams, they, they don't realize that they have to do the work. They have to lower themselves to do the grunt work, so to speak, before they can move forward. And that is what you did. And from what I'm hearing, and that is why I think Kwame saw something in you to keep you going, keep you moving forward. Not to put words in Kwame's mouth, but I'm going to put that in his mouth. That I, I think he saw something in you. And that's awesome because you don't see that often, that work ethic, that uh, sacrifice, and that um, I'm going to go back to it, work ethic because it's very hard to find. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, one of the ways that I look at it is, you know, when starting out in nursing, so the profession that I have my degree in, I started at the bottom, at the very beginning, having to learn those skills. And mm -hmm. I think about that, you know, with anything that you are trying to learn to do something new. So for me, like this podcast, the first few steps are really hard. Um, you know, podcasting is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And there have been some tears shed out of frustration. So, but just knowing kind of where you're starting, that there is a starting point and that it gets beyond that. So everybody that you see that is, you know, at point Z, they were at point A at some point. So not everything, we're not born with these skills. We have to work to improve them and to get better. And so that's really helped me kind of take a step back from myself um, and my ego and my, my need to be at the top and, and just start so it's just a matter of putting it that first foot forward and, and just starting curious though in all honesty did did you feel some kind of way about the admin thing or were you okay with it off the bat i was pretty okay with it i started it so i was still in nursing i was still practicing as a nurse. yeah wow. so i i did both um and then realized that my heart wasn't in nursing um mm -hmm. anymore and that i was putting more attention towards wanting to help Kwame grow the American Negotiation Institute. And that really kind of sparked that fire. I got to go um, tag along with him and see some of his workshops. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was just so much fun for me and brought me so much joy. And my heart was just moving in that direction. And I, I didn't um, want that to take away from the patients as, as a nurse um, sure. because that really requires a lot of focus and a lot of tension and, and I wanted somebody that would be in that position that was really focused on that work. So I made the switch um, and now here I am. You know what's awesome, uh, again, because we're talking about awesome stuff, um, is experiences. That you went and found experiences, whether you like it or not, I think that's kind of how we figure out what is and isn't our thing. Right? When you're finding, trying to figure out your dream, you're not going to know it until you try things. And a lot of people in your position probably would have been like, I, I have a full-time job. I don't have time to try other things. And so what's great about your story is you didn't let that stop you. And because you didn't let it stop you, you pivoted. And well, I'd Go ahead. Sorry. I'd like to say it was that easy uh, that I didn't let it stop me. Um, yeah, I probably I, just minimized it <laughs> entirely. Uh, well, I, so I left. I was a school nurse prior to this, and I left that, and I, I took a job working. I was going to go back to the hospital um, okay. and just work a lot of days on the weekend. Um, but my body likes to do this thing where it gets really stressed out, and then all of a sudden I have all of these crazy physical symptoms, um, oh, no. like stomach aches, my hair falls out. Um, I have 
narcolepsy. So I am a lot more tired when I'm really stressed. Um, so just like all of these things manifesting kind of almost like an allergic reaction to stress. Um, mm. and it, and it got to the point where I was starting the training, uh, for this new job at a hospital and just couldn't get out of bed. And I was like, wow. this is obviously my sign that this isn't for me. Um, and, and Kwame had been kind of encouraging me and pushing me, Hey, you could, if this is really what you want to do, you can quit your job. You can make it happen and you can quit your job. And I was kind of on the fence and like, eh, I don't know, uh, how am I supposed to support myself? Yeah, which are all very valid questions. But, you know, in the end, uh, this was better for me. And even though there's still a lot of stress and anxiety with, okay, how am I going to make this work uh, financially? It's a lot less stressful and a lot less severe um, mentally than the idea of having to pick up a job that does not fulfill me at all. So it's interesting that you talk about the mental consequences of your choices. Um, it being Mental Health Month, we're going to talk about it just a bit, right? Um, we don't often think about that, right? Especially if we have a job that's secure and a job that gives us money to not have stress. A lot of people will sacrifice their mental health in order to stay in that position. For you, it sounds like you did the opposite, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, is that fair to say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and a lot of it was because, you know, my mental health would take over to a point where I wasn't really functioning or providing value to things anymore because I was so busy worrying about my anxiety. Mm. Um, and even to, you know, not everybody has it extreme, but even to a lesser degree, when you're stressed about something, that's taking away mental energy that you could spend putting it into something that you really enjoy um, or chasing your dream um you know we go to work nine to five and then we're tired at the end of the day we're stressed we just kind of want to decompress and distract ourselves um and, and we're really uh, taking away from ourselves um to really achieve our full potential you know um that is so true i was recently at a job or i'm not gonna say what job or even which day but I had an experience where I came home at the end of the day. I just had no energy to do anything like dead tired. I was like, I had so many things to do for the podcast, for branding, all this stuff. But I was like, I can't, I can't. And I knew I would be getting up the next day to do the same thing. Wash, rinse, repeat kind of thing. And I was just stressed, miserable, not really mm -hmm. anxious, not even quite depressed entirely, but just meh. And it was the weirdest feeling, but I knew I had to make a change. I had to do something because finding a balance, um, I don't think people give enough credit for work-life balance. Personally, I like more balance on the life side than the work side, but it's, it's very important, guys. I, I mean, I think a lot of you diminish the importance of it or don't realize, but you're what is the point in having a job and earning all this money if you can't enjoy it? because you're too stressed about it. Exactly. And for me, a lot of that uh, had to do with, I had to set some really hard limits for myself. Um, what do you I mean, mean by that? So I, I guess chasing fulfillment and kind of starting my dream started earlier, even going through nursing school. Um, but I was kind of the person that always let a lot of people walk all over me um, mm. because I didn't want to kind of ruin that relationship. I was afraid of hurting feelings. My parents like to tell a story about how when I was little, all the other toddlers liked the word no. I liked the word maybe um, <laughs> because when my sister would ask for something, usually it was like a toy that I had, I didn't want to tell her no because that would hurt her feelings. Wow. But I didn't want to say yes because I didn't want to give her the toy. So I would say maybe instead as a way to avoid things um, and, and kind of so she yeah. couldn't really get mad at me. So I kind of avoided confronting the problem and it just kind of snowballed from there um, and, and got to the point where, you know, I would, uh, uh, I would actually avoid work to kind of avoid confrontations I'd be calling off um, just because of how extreme it was. Uh, and so it really ended up with me having to set some hard limits and figuring out what I wanted. So if the work field that I wasn't in wasn't cutting it for me or they were giving me too many hours. It really had to start with, okay, what do I need to do for myself? What do I feel like I can give? Can I give anything? 
and really looking at my reasons for what I wanted and, and um, figuring out my why. Having been through the experiences you've been through and having kind of made it through those experiences, right? For people who are listening and kind of facing that same struggle that they are now, how do you identify the limits or that you need to set limits? Because sometimes that can't be clear. Mm -hmm. Well, I think with setting limits um, or knowing when to set limits, it's kind of when it starts, when it's not sitting right with your heart and your mind. So mm -hmm. those two things need to kind of be in one in order for it to feel okay, because beyond that, then you're going towards burnout um, and, and um, I guess, a negative path. Um, but figuring out the way to set limits and um, what you want, it's a, really, it's an internal reflection. So think about, okay, this person is asking me for something. How will that impact X, Y, and Z? So if that's going to impact your ability to do self-care, um, then maybe that's not something that you can do. Or working with the person, okay, they're asking me for this much amount of my time. I can do about half of that. And then really talking it out because it's really important to take care of yourself first. Um, it's kind of like, you know, that how they tell you on the plane where you put yeah. your own oxygen mask on yep. before somebody else's because you're no use to the others if you're not functioning. The same can be said for nurses, moms, parents. Like <laughs> Sometimes y'all could be the worst. I, I was thinking of my mom, like she could be the worst. Nurses, I don't know if you were the worst, but my mom is a nurse. You know, they take <laughs> care of everyone else before they take care of themselves, which is against the adage. So um, I want to touch on something you said, which was self-care and this conversation that we're talking about. And sometimes I think people think self-care has to be extreme, right? Taking a vacation, um, they can only do it so many times a year. What, I, I already used my day off. I can't have another self-care day. I can't do self-care today. I did that like three months ago. What are you talking about? I hit my quarter. What can people do to help themselves with self-care? Like it doesn't have to be extreme. What, do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, self-care, you can do that in anything. I mean, mm. for me, even like your activities of daily living. So showering, brushing your teeth, putting on clothes for the day. Those are all things for self-care. Um, living in a clean environment. Uh, not that cleaning is necessarily something fun and feels caring, but it does have an impact. So it's little things like that. Um, even like, you know, if it's journaling or taking time to do some kind of hobby you like. So if you like drawing or you are really enjoying a TV show, take carving time out for that. So that way it's not all just work um, and yeah. things start piling up and backing up. You know, um, I've been traveling a lot for the last few weeks. And so I have my suitcase. It's still not unpacked. It's sitting on the end of my bed with the clothes. And I've been living out of the suitcase on top of the other clothes. And I'm doing laundry this weekend, so don't judge me. But um, there is so much truth to what you said about cleanliness and just a clean room and just your environment. Because I know right now I'm feeling a little discombobulated, a little out of sorts. But I also know that the moment I second I get a chance to clean my room and, you know, do the laundry, uh, put away my clothes, like all of that stuff, once I can kind of see the landscape, I feel better. Yeah, it feels so good. And I will not judge you for your laundry because I appreciate laundry you for is that. like my kryptonite. That's why we're friends, Catherine. That's why we're friends. <laughs> it's like you just put it all away just to wear it all again and have to go through the whole process. I was like, didn't I just do laundry? Yeah. Didn't yeah. I just do laundry? I'm like, can't I have a closet like on my floor? I feel like that would <laughs> just rotate. It was built in. Just yeah. rotate. Just rotate yeah. for us. But there is there is something to what you say about, you know, your mind being a reflection of your environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime that I feel down, I showering is, is one of my things because I step out of the shower and I feel so fresh and it's like a mm -hmm. whole new world. Um, so those, it's the little things that people don't really think about as self-care, but once those are gone, um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have had experience, you know, traveling for a long time, and then the first thing you want to do is shower. So it's yes. just like a whole new mindset. It's kind of taking the weight off of uh, your shoulders and kind of starting anew, turning a new page. Yeah, I think we, I think we take for granted some of the small things that can be, 
an example of self-care. Like you said, watching TV. A lot of times people are like, oh, you must have all the time in the world if you watch TV. But truly, if you can just take a half hour to watch your favorite sitcom or something, it relaxes yeah. you. Yeah, and it's, it's not saying like, okay, go binge watch a show and don't leave your house for days. Um, that, that's not what I mean by watching TV. <laughs> I mean, it, whether it, just carving out a small amount of time uh, for yourself, doing something that brings you honest joy. So if that is a funny TV show or if it's CSI, crime scene, whatever, um, those little acts have, have big impact on your ability to be present in the moment for when things aren't necessarily always going well. Um, mm -hmm. Or even, even just, you know, when you have a, ta a to-do list that you need to get done. Oh, there is such power and um, relief in checking off a to-do list. Like, I'll put something on just to cross it off. I'm like, do I have one here? I had, I just wrote something just so I could cross it off. There is this power in that, that I feel like, oh, I did it. If I forget, I'll just put it on just so I can check it off or cross it off. There really is something to that. Amy, I knew I liked you. I am the same way. I love to do this. Yes. <laughs> and I'll just add something. Oh, uh, like something I already did. I'll even put that on just yes. so I can cross it off. And that's that legit. I something on my list that's already crossed off and it doesn't feel so overwhelming. It's legit. You're just going back and correcting the fact that you left it off. You still did it. You st it's worth crossing off. There's something to it. And I got to write it down. It can't be like that digital. The digital one's not as satisfying. <laughs> No, it's not. Yeah, it's not. I, I like the paper and pen. <laughs> the <Yeah>. paper and pen. <laughs> but, but see, this is what works for us. Um, one thing you said earlier, you can't compare someone's chapter A to their chapter Z, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same way with self-care. I think social media has kind of trained us to look at other people and what they're doing. And like, man, these guys are living self-care. But what self-care is for Catherine is different than, what, than self-care for me. Right, mm -hmm. and that's something I think people also need to realize. Oh, uh, social media, that is a whole nother rabbit hole. Um, I mean, we get so caught up in the comparisons and forget to realize that people are posting also their most perfect, mm -hmm. happy moments. Um, I mean, think about it yourself. How often are you posting your negative and your bad and your struggles? People want to share their successes and, and the good times. And so we often forget that, you know, Everybody else has negatives. They've all tripped yeah. and falled, falled, fell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a teacher. English isn't my strong point. Um, they, everybody has had trips. They've fallen, you know, yeah. whatever. They've all had struggles. Somebody's point A, it may have taken them a long, many years to get and, to their yeah. point Z, and that's all they're showing. Uh, but, you know, we don't see the kind of in-between in the middle. So it's really important to, you know, focus on yourself. Um, and, and focus on what works for you uh, instead of getting caught up in, in what somebody else is doing. Um, I, one of my favorite things is, you know, you can take inspiration from somebody else, but not imitation. So add what inspires you to what you're already doing that is already successful. So true. So true. The other thing I'll extend on what Kevin is saying is, don't be so caught up in scrolling through social media, spending your time and your life scrolling and swiping. It's like the wiki downfall, right? You just, you start on one, you click on another, and you just keep going, going. It never ends. Don't do that. Live your life. Post it if you need to, but don't be so caught up in other people's lives that you forget to live your own. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I am horrible I still scroll so I still have the same struggles as everybody else it's I hard. get caught up on it too um but nobody is perfect we all have we all have our thing well so you, you make a great point because I think people often think that if I cured it once if I was able to do it for one day that's it I'm done what, what, what else do I need to do I've, I've done everything I need to do and that's not the case either guys mental health and your life is an ongoing daily pay process I mean Catherine, you've had ups and downs, right? Even after knowing this stuff with your work experience, right? That's, that's normal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I wish there was a magic button to, you know, say, oh, I've done this, I've checked it off my to-do list, and now I'm beyond it. I've moved yep. past it. 
but unfortunately as people, you know, life is kind of a, a squiggle. It's not a straight line from point A to point B. Um, so, I mean, and particularly with mental health, yeah, I still have my struggles. You know, yeah. I, I went through a very, very rough patch where it was kind of all the time and, and now I've kind of grown out of it, but that doesn't mean that I don't still have things. You know, even just a few weeks ago, I, I went through um, a, lower, a lower moment uh, as I typically, you know, see those things come up when the winter is coming and it gets darker. Um, mm -hmm. But I know that about myself and I know the steps that I can take to move beyond it. Um, so I still go through it and, you know, sometimes, you know, you take one step forward, you take two steps back, but you still continue to push and move forward. So true. And, and, and sometimes things will hit you out of nowhere, which will make no sense, you know, and recently I had one experience where um, I was in an accident and it threw me off, just the loss of control. And I don't even know why. And so I'm seeing someone to get help just to kind of talk about it and figure that out because I, it just makes no sense to me. For all my 38 years of life, I've never had an issue. And then all of a sudden I'm like overthinking things. And so there's no shame or judgment for needing help. The point is ask for that help, guys. I mean, there's no limitation. Too young, too old, there's no such thing for it at all. I mean, you've... In your experience, have you talked to people of wide-ranging backgrounds? As far as, you know, asking for help? Yeah, cust uh, yes, asking for help or being affected by mental health. Uh, you know, working in psych, I saw a complete wide array. Um, yeah. But in, in my own journey, yeah, I mean, ask anybody from whatever background. It, it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. um, we all have brains. We all have emotions. Um, so nobody's exempt from that. Uh, so it's just important to, you know, speak up, use your voice and, and reach out to resources around you. Absolutely. So Cather, what is next for you? I mean, Kwame's got you tied up. He's got you working. You got a podcast coming out. What, what do we, what do you see coming down the pipe for yourself? Well, the goal is to do a lot more speaking engagements, um, and really impacting women. I just joined a woman's board. Um, and we'll be sitting on that. Um, so I'm really looking forward to uh, kind of growing and talking more uh, and inspiring confidence. That's awesome. I love it. Well, let me ask you, as someone who's kind of gone through it, seen different things, had different experiences, and, and really working your way through it now, right, what is something you would recommend to people who are chasing their dream today they could do? Well, the first thing is just start. Uh, no matter where you are, mm -hmm. just start. I mean, obviously, I'm not at point Z yet. I'm still in that kind of starting process, um, but it had to start somewhere. Um, but also, make sure that you are able to say no in setting those boundaries, um, so that way you can chase your dream and and go farther. Because unless otherwise, people will just kind of walk all over you and and take you for advantage. Very, very true, guys. Very true. And now, Catherine, it's time to get to know you just a little bit better. Yes, I live for out. these questions. <laughs> it's time to pull out the questions. All right. We got five questions for you, randomly selected, slightly screened. Uh, I'm okay. ready for this. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. How much would you have to be paid to never use another cell phone again? Oh. Huh. Um. Well, can I negotiate that? Is my question. Uh, I, I guess you. That's a that was a fair question. Value? That's a fair question for someone who is from the American Negotiation <laughs> Institute. Touche. Kwame would be proud of you. Like, if, I'm going to say I, I'm going to say monetary value to keep it simple. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I hate that it's going to be such a high number. Probably like a million dollars at least. Uh, no, it'd have to be more. It'd have to be able to retire. I'm wow. Say like 50 million. <laughs> 50 or 15? 50. Wow. All right. That's fair. I mean, uh -huh. it, I, I'd like to point out that you could still use an iPad. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's too late. You asked for 50. <laughs> you could use an iPad. There, there are still landlines. 50 million will get me to a remote <laughs> island somewhere. You know. That's, that's fair. Kwame would be proud that you tried to negotiate that, though. <laughs> Simple question. 
Would you rather visit the zoo, the library, or an art museum? Oh, I really like art. Um, oh. You probably can't see it behind me. There's a painting behind me. That's gorgeous. I do, I do all my own art. Um, did you make that? I did. I painted that. That's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Guys, check um, out the YouTube channel. You can see a picture of it. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I always walk into these stores. I really like modern art that's really kind of eclectic. Um, and you go into all these star stores and it's just like strips, like stripes of painting. I'm like, I can paint that. So I made myself <laughs> so my own. Did it yourself. So I'm yeah. guessing yours would be art museum then. I'll probably pick the art museum. Probably I'm, not. I like art. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. This might take you a little second, unless you have this. If you owned a boat, what would you call it? Oh, right. I, th I thought it might take you a second. Um, oh, no. <laughs> this is a really hard question. Um, the cell phone question, she can give a number. The one where she needs to give a name is the struggle. <laughs> well, I'm the same with, like, restaurants. I can never make a decision. Um, I'd probably call it. It's not very original, but I'd name it after myself. I want my name on a boat. Hey, why not? Yeah. Why not? So what would it be called officially? First, last name, just first name, just last name? What are we thinking? Well, I'd have to go with, like, the Catherine uh, because Ooh, my Catherine. family, my dad is one of nine kids, so I have lots of uh, first cousins and, and families that are Kanapkis, so I couldn't just call it the Kanapki. One of my family members might take my Yeah, boat. it wouldn't be yours then. <laughs> it wouldn't be yours. The Catherine. I like it. I like it. All right, number four. What's your favorite weekend ritual? Ooh. Um, so I am a very early morning gym goer. I, I get up and I go to the gym at five in the morning, Monday through Friday. Uh, so my favorite thing to do is turn, ha not have my alarms go off. I don't really sleep in. I still wake up probably around six. Your body in the probably wakes yeah. you up. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still an early riser, but just not having to, you know, be ruled by the alarm. <laughs> it's very freeing. I respect that. I respect that. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, last question. If you could live in the house from any movie, which would you choose? Ooh. And I'm going to say, if you could live in the house from any TV or movie, which would you choose? Does, like, the Taj Mahal count? Because I'm pretty sure it's been I'm, in movies. I'm sure it's been in a movie, yes. I would definitely live in there. Really? Yeah. It's you gorgeous. It yeah, is gorgeous. My, my mom was born in um, India. My grandparents were missionaries there. Nice. So she was born in Valor in southern India, and we got to take a trip over there. Uh, my sister and I did. Um, and the Taj Mahal awesome is, is just that? gorgeous. Yeah. How awesome is that? Well, Catherine, thank you so much for being on the show, sharing your story, talking with me about mental health, which always means a lot to me. Let these guys know, how can we find you and keep in touch and follow you? Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, um, just Catherine Kanapke, and then also the Ask With Confidence podcast is coming out. It's not live yet, so you can't search for it, but I will definitely give Amy the link uh, when I do, so she can put it in the description. So check it out. Awesome. Well, Catherine, thank you so much. And guys, don't forget to check out the show notes over at amyj21.com slash episode 207. All the links that Catherine mentioned, all her socials will be on there, as well as the link for the birthday fundraiser. Remember, we are raising $2,100. $2, your help is needed. Don't wait. Statistics and studies show that if you wait, you're not going to do it. And therefore, you can't help others, right? We just talked about how important mental health is. So help us out. Help raise some money for a good cause. Mental Health America, it's not going into my pocket. It's going straight to them. We'd appreciate it. Until next time, Dean Chasers, keep chasing.